Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Professor Vishwajit Dhar and we are going to discuss what we've already discussed a number of times, the renewed trade war, or shall we say the trade war that Mr. Trump has started. President Trump has declared a couple of days back again that a new set of measures should be instituted against the Chinese and the threat is of $500 billion of different kinds of sanctions, uh, increase in uh, taxes and so on. What, where is it going? Do you think that we are seeing an intensification of the trade war and this is going to destabilize the global market? Will it lead to actually the United States gaining or is it going to lead to everybody losing? Yeah, you know, let me, let me uh, start by saying that, uh, you know, this whole thing uh, started in February of 2018 with uh, Trump uh, announcing that he's going to uh, get after countries uh, who are exporting uh, iron, steel and aluminium. And, uh, and after that, uh, many commentators said that, you know, this is a way of uh, uh, Trump negotiating with the trading partners because that's what he knows. He knows how to cut deals. And he's trying to negotiate and bring the trading partners onto the table to negotiate something. Interest being balance the US external account. That is right. So he's saying that in US is importing too much. And, and that is the reason why you have the rust belt. And the only way to get the rust belt, you know, sort of, uh, you know, uh, get oil and start running is to stop imports from, uh, you know, destroying U.S. Uh, uh, markets. But uh, those who uh, thought that this was just a threat the, of, uh, that uh, Trump was sending out, um, you know, would actually be um, sad to hear that y yesterday, from 6th of July, uh, U.S. has st actually started collecting taxes. Uh, on um, import taxes, uh, of, you know, and these are import duties are 25 percent uh, on uh, 34 billion worth of Chinese imports. Yeah. So again, on the face of it, you know, uh, this is not much because the U.S. imports more than 500 million billion from the U.S. 505 billion in 2017. So this would be roughly about less than about seven percent. But what you just said that Trump is now threatening that he is going to impose uh, these punitive tariffs on 500 billion worth of Chinese goods. Now, this is virtually covering the entire imports that, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of US from, from China. And, and this uh, is absolutely ridiculous because uh, in two counts, one is that you know, the largest, two largest uh, economies just can't destabilize the global economy in this manner. This is completely outside the WTO tariff uh, boundaries. So what have been set within the WTO bound tariffs and so on? Absolutely. This is unilateral. This is what we call unilateral action. And this, this is without any information to WTO? Absolutely. Without any notice outside the normal dispute settlement process of WTO? Absolutely. So this is, this is uh, not uh, you know, completely disregarding the WTO, which is the thing that I was just going to come. That, uh, uh, Trump uh, has has embarked on this very dangerous kind of a thing, and on two counts. One is that you know there is uh, already uh, you know China has retaliated immediately. Again, you know the equivalent amount of U.S. imports they have retaliated, and 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 most of the products that Chinese have uh, you know very cleverly identified are actually agricultural commodities. And, and, and China has, of course, said that if Ch Trump wants to walk that, that way, he then, then they will also do that. Similar sentiments have been expressed by the European Union. European Union has also you know, uh, announced unilateral action. Should Trump actually get after the European Union? Now, many of these countries are actually going on the unilateral pathway without any reference to the WTO. Now, uh, you know that India has also been targeted, you know, Indian steel and aluminium. What India has done is that India has gone and complained to the WTO or rather sent a notice to the WTO saying that it will, imp uh, that it will uh, impose safeguard duties on uh, th 29 products that India is importing from the US. What I find very strange is that India should actually <coughs> notify under safeguards. Because safeguard action can only be taken when there is a, uh, you know, flooding of imports of particular commodities 
and uh, uh, you cannot target a single country under safeguard action. You know, it has to be for a particular product, flooding takes place, imports come in from all the sources. But other countries have retaliated unilaterally, unilaterally. as well. Yeah. So, so India, you know, has shown a bit of uh, restraint, I would say, but not a very clever one by going and taking an action. So they're being soft to the US? They're soft, softer to the US and that's what the point is that you know they are telling maybe the 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 the, the signal is that look uh, we are taking some action for uh, you know public consumption but, but you're not going, not, going to, not going to hurt you're you not going to hurt you it's not going to hurt you you know what it what it means yeah uh, but uh, so india has not walked that path of uh, unilateral action if you see our earlier discussions and we have been we have been having these discussions for uh, almost a decade now we have not been particularly fond of the WTO either. We have said shrink it or sink it. These are the slogans that used to be there. The WTO was a platform of, which was imposing a whole lot of uh, intellectual property rights regime on countries which could not pay those monopoly profits or monopoly rent, as it were. So all of these things we have been arguing. So why should we be unhappy with the, the you know, uh, shall we say, Trump taking a acts to the WTO and dismantling it if this goes on this way. Yeah, you know, see, actually for, uh, uh, you know, uh, people, uh, you know, who, who actually were protesting against the WTO, they actually, uh, some of them actually took this extreme position. But I think at the same time, you know, we were uh, very clear that we are taking this position in order to open up certain bargaining positions in, in, in the organization. Now, uh, many of us, I think, you know, you will also agree with, him, with me, I'm sure, that we have not, we have been actually supporting multilateralism. We don't want the, you know, the, the rich or the powerful to get their way in the global system. Uh, uh, and, um, and therefore, you know, we, we actually want a very strong multilateral platform, WTO being one of them, where countries which are like-minded, you know, and and the, the, they are the they are the you know sort of emerging powers or you know the lesser lesser developed countries. They could come together, form coalitions, and put the pressure on the big guys. So what you're saying is, if it is not multilateral, then you are in the danger of the rich countries bilaterally bullying the smaller countries and getting, in fact, a far better deal. In fact, this is the route that Mr. Trump now wants Absolutely. to Absolutely. So now, you know, uh, you, you, again, you will recall that, you know, we had in the WTO the Doha Development Agenda. You know, the first time in the, from since the uh, inception of multilateral trading system, the word development was put on a, on a sort of uh, negotiating agenda. Uh, of and trade of trade regime, and and uh, India was actually instrumental in getting de you know uh, Brazil, South Africa, and many other African countries together to put this agenda on the table, and and we were actually negotiating. We wanted to re renegotiate agriculture agreement, which is absolutely against India. The TRIPS agreement, we wanted uh, you know sort of carve outs in the TRIPS agreement, and uh, we also know it for a fact that because of the intransigence of the developed countries. The Doha negotiations have come to a standstill and virtually at the point of breakdown. Yeah. Now, here you can see what Trump is doing. Trump is actually trying to put the final nail on the coffin of the WTO. So, shall we say that when multilateralism does not serve the interest of rich countries, in this case the United States being the key one, then they are willing to abandon multilateralism, which they have been doing with all the bilateral treaties which have been going on for quite some time. And this, in essence, is going back to the law of the jungle. Absolutely. And that's what now Mr. Trump seems to favor. Absolutely. So this is what he's trying to do, that um, uh, he's uh, pushing countries away from the multilateral framework, which is not favorable to the U.S. because there's a, you know, there's a serious threat of ganging up by, you know, the small... The he's helping everybody to gang up. That is right. So what he's now doing is pushing countries away, as you rightly said, away from the multilateral framework to a kind of a bilateral uh, you know framework because you know there are there would be the the big companies and others who, who would like free trade to happen and how do they make that free trade happen and you as you know 
that uh, all these trade agreements, uh, the bilateral agreements are not just uh, about tariffs. These are about things like investment, intellectual property and all those. And these are the things the big companies want. So, you know, you can actually see a very clear agenda that, uh, you know, coming of uh, the, uh, the, the together of an agenda of the US administration and the, the big multinationals taking place in this sort of a grand scale, uh, which is, has happened all the time. But now you are now seeing the, the flowering of that kind of an agenda. But you say that this, this kind of agenda may help American big business, but it is not going to help revive the Rust Belt or the no, American ab people. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, it is absolutely impossible because, you know, the rest Rust Belt is truly rusted. Huh? And if Trump thinks that by shutting imports, the, the, the Rust Belt is, is, is just going to move on, it is like switching on. Uh, you know, uh, 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 a light bulb. It's not that simple. So, what is going to happen? You know, this whole uh, uh, Trump's uh, protectionism is eventually going to hurt the American consumers the most, because the com American consumers from from today onwards are paying 25 percent more for the imports there. They'll 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 be uh, you know uh, the products they'll be importing from China. And this is not going to revive the American industry. And yeah, and there is, and, and this is not as if uh, costier imports will turn the focus of the consumers to domestic producers because domestic producers do not exist. Um, so uh, eventually, Trump is going to hurt his own base. And the the point is uh, that how soon do the does the boy base realize that this action by the U.S. president? is actually going against the interest of the citizens of the country. Coming back to India, India at this particular point of time when there is a trade war, Trump is isolated globally, at least in trade terms. At this time, India is talking about signing a FTA with free trade agreement to the United States. How stupid does that sound? Completely stupid. I think, you know, the, the worst thing that can happen to India at this, uh, you know, at any point, and this point, at this point in particular, is to sign a free trade agreement with uh, uh, with the United States. And why I say it's it's absolutely stupid at this point for two reasons. One is, of course, you know, as you said, Trump is completely isolated. He has absolutely no legitimacy left, whatever, uh, whatsoever, in 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 doing. Um, uh, deals globally, mm -hmm. so we are going to be actually providing legitimacy uh, to the to the U.S. and country which now has the largest population and therefore, in many in the eyes of many, you know, potentially the largest market. Uh, so Trump can go around saying, telling the whole world, look, I've kicked the Chinese out, but now the potentially largest ma market is now in my hands. Now. You know, if you look at the India-China, uh, India-US or India-US relations, uh, you know, at least for the past 30 years since we started liberalizing, there's only one thing that can be said about the relation, which is that the US at every point has not hesitated even once to get after, the, after India. It all started with the attack on in intellectual property. You know, you were part of this whole struggle. You know, there was the US trade representative, you know, must take her name, Carla Hills, who said that the markets of the partner countries will be will be pried open with a crowbar. That was a language, and this was. By the way, our uh, economic advisor to the government who just left, yes. he had also given exactly. a note supporting that uh, exactly. to the U.S. Congress. Exactly, and then I was Arvind uh, Absolutely, I'm coming to that, and then at at uh, there's a long history of the US Congress investigating, quote unquote, India's trade and investment policies, the last of, of, uh, of which actually the report came out from the UN, United States uh, International Trade Commission in 2014. And this uh, report uh, was based on a whole series of, um, you know, uh, evidences gathered from a cross section of people and of course, Arvind Sobramaniam. And Arun Subramaniam gave this evidence in 2013, saying that India's trade and investment policies actually hurt the, uh, hurt the Americans, and therefore U.S. should start a dispute against India in the WTO in a forthright manner. So, uh, so this is the the trade policy. You know, don't have the time to actually go over this, but at 
each and every and one area which has been the, uh, the focus of the US administration all through the past 30 years is intellectual property rights. Yeah, so India is a country which according to the US is a, is a serious violator of intellectual property. Why? Because we produce generic medicines. And give it cheap to the African Africans and other and developing countries. Absolutely. So we are the sort of the, uh, you know, the uh, pharmacy of the third world. And, and pharmacy this, of the global poor. Of the global poor. And therefore, uh, it's, this is something that is depriving the big pharma of the markets in, in Africa and all, where uh, we have all these stories about how they were exploiting the AIDS patients. So given this uh, kind of track record, and then of course the other thing that the US has now done, and I think we need to discuss this even uh, more in, in the context of the MSP increase. Uh, in May this year, US had gone to the WTO with a complaint that all of India's farm subsidies are in violation of WTO. This is a minimum support price. Minimum language, support sure. price, which has happened now. So I'm sure in the coming days, you're going to see action, you know, because the US is selectively using the WTO. Wherever it wants to hurt India, it does. So in intellectual, in, in the health in, uh, sector, we have under pressure from the, w, um, from the United States. In the food sector, food security and livelihoods in the rural areas, we are under pressure from the WTO. And of course, you know, there are other areas too in the manufacturing and all, which whatever little uh, US has left of the manufacturing, they, they want to exploit uh, the market in India. So under these circumstances, I find it absolutely astonishing that there are these quote unquote advisors of the government who say that, you know, this is the opportune moment to jump into the fire. And, and to get burned by doing a FTA with the United States. So even if there is an argument for FTA with the United States, which probably never was, because it would have been completely one-sided, US today is not a country which is manufacturing goods, it's trying to extract rent in terms of intellectual property. That is really its basic uh, mode of subsistence today. The, and of course, printing the dollar. That FTA was never a good idea with the United States. But in today's terms, when there is a trade war and there is, as, I, as we discussed, a relative isolation in the United States, we are seen to be publicly siding with the wrong side. You are absolutely, you know, you are absolutely correct that, um, you know, doing an FTA with the United States was, uh, you know, um, uh, would have been disastrous under any circumstance. You know, you, in, in, you know, US, uh, India should not, think of doing a, a trade deal, a free trade deal with the US, which has always been trying to exploit India in one way or the other. And this, this is a history that goes long back, you know. Uh, you know, we can, we can look, look at the thing of the PL 480 and, you know, the wheat imports and all that. So this whole history of India-US relations, both in economic terms and the political terms, has, has been fraught with all kinds of problems. So how can any government in India think of doing a trade deal with a country which has always been wanting to exploit uh, India's markets in a very unfair manner. So, I, and, 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 and uh, absolutely, you're absolutely correct that this is the, the last thing that we should do now, uh, doing, think, think, even think of doing a trade deal with the US. Thank you very much, Vishwajit. This is all the time we have today. Please do keep watching News Click and also visit our website and our YouTube page.